and because we have never seen it happen before or she's never done it before um we weren't really prepared i've been waiting for a moment like this i've been waiting for a moment to like have a real good solid real world test for how home assistant and smart home technologies can make life a little bit easier or even bring a bit of peace of mind to just everyday living what happened is that typically my wife would uh, put my daughter in the crib she would go run an errand and because i'm home and the baby's in the crib really not much supervision is necessary and sometimes my, my wife tells me that hey she's gonna step out for an hour sometimes she doesn't she just goes and just leaves in her crib knowing that she's gonna be back within like i don't know 45 minutes i was getting ready for a meeting it was a work day um and I didn't know she had left. I'm getting ready for the meeting. I started to lock the office door, but then I see the baby by the door and I'm like, oh, hey baby, All right? Uh, talk to her for a bit, give her a kiss, I told her that daddy's gonna be in a meeting and that I'm locking the door. And then I kind of shoot her out, told her to go and find her mom. Then I locked the door and I started my meeting. Again, I thought my wife was home. She was not. We have a friend staying with us. She was sleeping in the other room. We had previously just bought a new lock for the door because the baby likes to just barge in. So my door was locked, the guest room was locked. Essentially, the baby started rattling on all the doors. Now this isn't uncommon, she does stuff like this all the time. Especially if I'm in a meeting, she would like try to rattle the door because she doesn't understand that if I'm in a meeting, you can't come in. So she does that for about five minutes, stops. She does it on the guest room door, it stops. We all assume that my wife was home. So then while the meeting is going on, I'm hearing like pitter patter feet, typical house stuff, like things that I hear her do on a daily basis. So I don't think anything of it because this is normal. I didn't notice or really register that the door to the house open. Unfortunately, even though we have a smart lock on the door, the baby knows how to open it wild so we hear the alarm chirp like chirp chirp i assume my wife is home and that she's just going outside because my wife gardens often didn't think anything of it my meeting is for an hour so after the hour i come out and when i come out i see my wife normal right she comes and asks me the question hey did you take the baby out the crib and of course i'm puzzled why do you ask no oh well i came to the door and the baby greeted me at the door and i'm like oh that's odd i thought you were home this entire time she's like no i was out on an errand so if you were out on the errand and i saw the baby out the crib who took her out the crib of course, it dawned on us, she must have climbed out the crib. So then now, we're like, what's done is done, the baby is safe, we're, everything is fine. But then, when the friend came out later that evening, she was like, hey, yeah, you know, the baby was rattling on the door, um, it didn't bother me that much. But then she was like, yeah, and I saw her in the backyard playing on the swing, um, but, you know, it was whatever. We're like, but wait, she was playing in the backyard on the swing? That means the baby went through the front door, out to the side gate, into the backyard to go and play on the swing for like 10 minutes. Because when I came back, everyone said that she was inside the house, which means that she was out there and then came back to the front door inside the house. Wild. Anything could have really happened, but it did raise a few concerns in that, well, one, uh, we need to have extra security for the door because even though the door has a smart lock on it, the baby is tall enough and smart enough to operate it. So we need something that's like higher up and more secure. The thing that could have prevented all of this, besides from just communication and say, hey, that I'm stepping out. And realistically, what we need to know is just when she leaves the crib. Like if we know the moment she leaves the crib, then we can kind of address that because this also happened the very next day, right? She left her crib early in the morning to try to come into our room. Now, we have the house mostly baby-proofed, but you still don't want a child unsupervised like that. So, yeah, we just need a system that will alert us when she escapes. Hence now, Home Assistant. So using Home Assistant, I came up with a pretty cool way of tracking her. Talking with my wife, uh, she had one major restriction, and that is she did not want any locks on the door. Instead, let's just find a way to just get alerted whenever she leaves the crib, and then we can just take it up from there. Major thing that we need is we need a way to get early detection of when she leaves the crib. Uh, this needs to be easy for my wife to operate if there's any operation necessary. And lastly, it just needs to be reasonable. Like we, like with tech, you can kind of go really crazy with it. We, we just need something reasonable. Here are some of the things that we currently have within the room. There's a car button that controls a smart bulb. 
as well as a switch, like a smart plug that turns on a sound machine. She has a Google Nest speaker inside there as well. And I think that's about it. Those are like the major stuff that's within the room. So with all of that, I guess I'll pose the first question. What would you do? Knowing what is currently within the room and what is at your disposal, what additional thing would you buy, if any? Uh, what kind of automation would you do? What would you do given the restrictions or the requirements that I've mentioned earlier? All right, so here's what I did. So I bought an Akara motion sensor. I felt like this would be just enough to just do what I need it to do in terms of just tracking the child. Without getting too crazy, we can obscure it. Um, and I think it'll do it, uh, give us the early enough detection that I need. So I, I considered using, let's say, um, the door sensor. So like the contact sensor, but that's too late. I don't want her opening the door. I need her, I need us to be alerted the moment she gets out of the crib, not the moment she gets out and opens the door. Like, it needs to be earlier. I felt the motion sensor would work best because then I can place it underneath her bed unless she flies or floats, right? She has to touch the ground, and the moment she touches the ground, we will know. Let's jump to the automation or into Node-RED and Home Assistant, and let me show you what I did. Okay, so I have the Akara uh, motion sensor. Uh, don't mind the noise, there's a lot of people in the house. Um, but I'm gonna go through really quick what this automation looks like. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. I have here the little car button. When I long press it, what's gonna happen is that it's going to essentially set off uh, input that is going to allow this to activate. So whenever the alarm gets triggered or whenever the motion sensor uh, sees motion, because that switch is on, it's gonna know that, hey, I can actually alert uh, myself or my wife uh, that she's trying to escape. Now that motion sensor there is placed here specifically because the crib is along this wall. And if she were to climb out and onto the floor, it should trigger. When I did a, a test earlier, essentially it was unable to pick me up if I was in this corner and anywhere in this section, it did not see me. But the moment I crossed over into this section here, it started to pick me up. So my only concern though is if she's in the crib playing, because we she has toys, she's, she's old enough to have toys there. But if she's playing in the crib, I don't know if it'll pick her up here. And then also there is a chance that if she throws her toys onto the floor, as she sometimes does, she just throws things, uh, it will trip it off as well. So I may need to put a timer on it. So, but it's going to be take, I have to test it. I need to test it. Walk to the corner of the crib right there by the wall. Good, good, good. All right. Walk to this corner of the crib. Good. Wrong corner, the other corner. <laughs> you think this is funny. Climb out the crib. Allura, do not leave your room. <laughs> when the light is red, you stay inside your room and wait for your mommy and daddy. Mm. You hear that? We have to stay so we can't climb out of the crib anymore, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Did that startle you? Yeah. It did? Yeah. Oh, no. Also, the toy didn't set it off, so that's a good spot. Okay, so this is how this works. Uh, so this gets triggered whenever it notices that the sensor that's inside Rue's room uh, detects motion. That's all this needs to do. So once it detects motion, uh, we have this bedtime guard is active. All this is, is here is a helper switch that I created called Allura Bedtime Guard. Uh, it's a simple switch that we can toggle off and on. If it's on, then basically we can move forward. Uh, here, we're going to set the volume of all the speakers, the ones that's in the baby's room as well as our room. Uh, we're going to set that to five, or this is technically halfway. Once it's set to halfway, we're going to save the states of all the lights, how they currently are, uh, just in case we have any special lights or if, let's say, the lights in our room is blue or whatever the case is, we're going to just save the current state of all the lights, after which we're going to run all of these in parallel. We're going to, one, turn off the bedtime guard, um, so that way we don't have it trip multiple times. 
we're gonna message ourselves or the parents, which is myself and my wife. And we're basically gonna send a message that says, uh, check on Alora, she may have escaped her bed. And then it also is gonna set the lights of both places, both the baby's room as well as our rooms to red. And then it's also gonna send a message to our daughter, which is what you heard inside this clip. Um, basically telling her not to leave the room. And then it's gonna set a delay for one hour. And then after an hour, it's just gonna reset the states back to where we originally had them. If you would like to get a copy of this, you can either copy this down or you can just check the link in the description uh, to chaperone. I'm gonna have a copy of this, the JSON for it there, where you can download it and import it into your own um, Node-RED environment. Do it at your own discretion. Uh, don't do it because I told you. Do this at your own risk. To be honest, I think this is really good. I, I think this solution is actually really good. It does what we need. And after talking with my wife again, one of the things that we're looking to do is if we do need to take it a step higher, she did acquiesce and uh, decided that it is okay if we get, let's say, a smart lock for the door. Her contention is if we get a smart lock for the door, then the it stays unlocked at all times. But if she gets out of the crib and the sensors pick her up, then it would automatically lock at that point and it'll just stay locked until we come and let her out because again, we would be notified. I haven't really done any research into the smart lock, so I'm not gonna go down that route just yet, but at least that is an option for in the future um, in terms of improvement. Other than that, I think what we have works really well. Um, there's other things that could have been done, to be honest. Like I mentioned the contact sensors. Um, I've seen Shane Watley use the contact sensors and kind of convert it to work with, um, what do you call it, the bed sensors. So you kind of have like the bed pressure sensors that we could have put in a crib to see if, hey, she lifts herself out of the crib, the sensors would indicate that there's nothing in the crib, which would be even faster in terms of recognition. So that is a possibility. The millimeter wave sensor that Akara has, maybe that could be something. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't thought it all the way through. Or even like the hub. I didn't purchase the hub when getting the sensor because the buttons work without it. Now the motion sensor, as you saw, also worked without it. So I didn't see a need to get the hub, but because the hub has a speaker and lights and a siren, maybe I could also use that as like an additional thing to uh, alert the baby and to just say, hey, don't leave. Again, all of these are just nice to have. If these things sound pretty interesting to you, you could check the link in the description. Uh, I have links to the stuff that I used as well as the additional Akara stuff that I spoke about. They are affiliate links, um, so I do get a small kickback, but it's at no additional cost to you. So uh, I appreciate the support if you do want to purchase it, or you can just go to it directly. It's your choice. Let me know in the comments uh, what your automations would look like or what you would do in this situation. It was very interesting encountering this for the first time. And as she gets older, I'm pretty sure we're going to need to do uh, other different things just to ensure safety because she's very capable <laughs> and much capable like I think we underestimate her a lot This was fun to be honest. This was very fun. Uh, so with that 